pretty sure it'll fly again. We can fix this. Damage report. So it's a bit more internal damage than we had figured out. Need to reglue that in. That's broken. Everything has been removed. That has been broken. Anyway, everything inside has been completely gutted, taken out. We have started the rebuild process by gluing in the fuel tank mount. That's nice and solid, sturdy. We have rebuilt the firewall, which goes this way. And that'll be mounted right up there in the front. And glue that in right now. We gotta clean up some of these edges. As you can see, the wood here is completely exposed because we had to take the monocoat off because there was a nice big crack all the way down this edge from here all the way back to here. So we've re would that together and epoxied up here while we did the fuel tank mount because there was a nice big hole the hole was on this side. So anyway, we'll probably need to CA this, this edge as well which we haven't done yet. So that'll be the next thing we do. But right now, the next step is to remove the main landing gear, which is just this right here. Because we lost that clamp. So we'll bend the wheels back straight again, and that's the next step. This is where I'm at. We have the plane. We have a new firewall. It's not installed. It's just placed there so I could figure out where I need to dremel it to make it fit in there perfectly. Uh, the original firewall, it cracked and split, and that was not good. So... We have double layered it, we have one and two, so that way the firewall will be twice as strong when we put the blind nuts in. So now I need to take my engine mount, find out where all the holes need to go. So step one right now is to drill out the holes, insert the blind nuts, hopefully not explode this firewall like we did the other one, then drill it to fit, and glue it in. Scott is now here to help us with the rebuild. The holes have been drilled on the new firewall. The blind nuts are ready for incision. Will the firewall stay intact for the incision of the blind nuts? Stay tuned to find out. Well, we're testing the onboard radio system. Incision of blind nuts. So far, so good. Except it takes the blind nut out. We finished the blind nuts. It was a long and painstaking process, but it's done. We're drilling the center hole in the firewall, so that way we have room for fuel and stuff. Inserting. No, fine. No. It's time for the insertion. Insertion. Scott is dremeling the wing so it is smooth on its end. Meanwhile, I am working with the engine's firewall. I'll be inserting the engine mount and getting the engine and nose wheel and all that in place. The engine mount has been installed. It is like rock solid on there. The firewall is looking nice. We still need to dremel across the top to, and the bottom to kind of, you know, smooth out the extended edges, but it is not going. Any, actually, it is. It's going somewhere, but it's pulling the whole plane with it. Right now, we are inserting spacers that we made, which will allow us to have room 
for the wings bar for the underside of the by wing. I have plenty of room for the wings bar. Right there. It works. So anyway, we found a spar that can go in. It's actually an old arrow from a bow and arrow system. We have an old Slurpee straw. Slurpee. They slide perfectly over the ends. These are going to be epoxied into the wing to make our sleeve and spar system. And that's going to hold on the bottom wing of the by wing. So we're just waiting for the epoxy to dry now. I would leave this side down. Yeah. Actually, I think the epoxy is draining. Scott has manufactured this beautiful fuselage cover on top of the fuselage. <laughs> 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 It is just a nice thick wood on the bottom, and then thin ribbing on the sides and top, which has been cut to a precision airfoil, and is exactly matched to the top of the fuselage, which we will rubber band over after we cover it in blue, and then we will be able to fly the trainer as a low wing. We cut holes in the wing again because we decided to insert servos. So we could actually fly this wing as a low wing instead of a by wing where we required the top wing to move the aileron service surface. So servos have been installed, holes drilled for the servo leads. Scott is inserting the wing over the tube. And this will allow us to see the low wing configuration. So we can get the wings to be straight. There we go, that wing is good. Opinion? Words. It's all up to you. Words, anything? We still need to work out that system. Make the wings stay on the airplane. But there it goes. First time with both wings staying in place. Since the crash. Since the crash. It sits so high off the ground. <laughs> we have the engine and we have the airplane ready to accept the engine. You won't see, but I can see it, which we have full throttle. Here we go. Let's go so the video is right side up. Full throttle. No throttle. Full throttle. So that's working properly. We have ailerons, full aileron control. Roll right, roll left. Those are looking nice, and we still have our flap control from before. Two position flaps. Still with the aileron. Everything's good. 